when you think of Nazi leaders, names like Hitler, Himmler and Goebbels might come to mind. But what about the lesser known architects of the Holocaust? Today, we delve into the dark shadows of history. In the annals of history, certain names have been etched in stone as symbols of evil. Yet as we peer into the abyss of the past, we realize that the machinery of the Holocaust was not solely driven by the infamous figures we've come to know. There were others, hidden in the dark corners, who played crucial roles in the perpetration of these heinous crimes. These lesser-known individuals were not mere foot soldiers, but key cogs in the wheel of the Nazi regime. They held positions of power and influence, shaping policies and directing operations that resulted in the death and suffering of millions. Their actions, though less publicized, were no less vile or destructive. From the architects of the final solution to the commanders of death camps, these hidden figures were instrumental in implementing the genocidal policies of the Third Reich. They operated behind the scenes, often shrouded in secrecy, their deeds hidden from public view. Yet, their impact was profound, and their legacy, a chilling reminder of the depths humanity can sink when consumed by hatred and bigotry. These were men and women who donned the uniform of the Schutzstaffel, the feared SS, and wielded their power with a chilling efficiency. They were bureaucrats, doctors and military officers who, under the guise of serving their country, perpetrated some of the most horrific crimes against humanity. Yet, their names are not as widely known, their stories not as frequently told. Today, we aim to change that. We will shine a light on these shadows of evil, expose their deeds, and ensure that their names are remembered not as heroes, but as the monsters they truly were. Now prepare yourself as we unmask five of these lesser-known Nazi leaders. First on our list is Josef Kramer, also known as the Beast of Belsen. Kramer, born in Munich in the early 20th century, was a man who would become synonymous with the horrors of the Holocaust. Kramer began his dark journey as a guard at Dachau and Sachsenhausen before being promoted to the role of commandant at Auschwitz-Birkenau and later Bergen-Belsen. His tenure at these camps was marked by unspeakable acts of cruelty and a chilling disregard for human life. At Auschwitz, Kramer oversaw the deaths of thousands, earning the moniker the Beast of Belsen. It was here that he demonstrated a terrifying level of sadism often personally selecting those who would be sent to the gas chambers. One of his most notorious acts was his role in the Hungarian operation in mid-1944, where 400,000 Hungarian Jews were sent to their deaths in a span of mere 10 weeks. Yet, it was at Bergen-Belsen where Kramer's true beastly nature shone through. His reign of terror escalated to horrifying new heights. The camp, initially designed as a transit camp, soon became a death camp under Kramer's command. The living conditions were inhumane, with rampant disease and starvation claiming countless lives. Kramer's indifference to the suffering was so extreme that he was eventually arrested by the SS, only to be reinstated later. As the Allies closed in, Kramer remained at Bergen-Belsen, displaying a chilling dedication to his monstrous duties. He was captured by British forces in April 1945. His trial was held later that same year at the Belsen trial in Lüneburg, Germany. Kramer, unrepentant till the end, was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Kramer met his end on the gallows in December of 1945, but his legacy of terror continues to haunt us. It serves as a stark reminder of the depths of cruelty that humans can stoop to when stripped of empathy and fueled by hatred. Next, we turn our spotlight on Friedrich Jekyll, the so-called hangman of Riga. In the shadows of World War II, Friedrich Jekyll emerged as one of the vilest figures, orchestrating and carrying out mass shootings during the Holocaust, particularly in Riga, Latvia. Jekyll was not a man who shied away from his monstrous duties. As an SS and police leader, he was responsible for the implementation of the Nazis' final solution in the Eastern Territories. His methods were brutal, his demeanor cold, and his actions horrifyingly efficient. Under his command, tens of thousands of innocent lives were extinguished, their only crime being the religion they practiced or the ethnicity they belonged to. Imagine someone so ruthless that he developed a shooting technique known as sardine packing. Victims were made to lie down in a pit, face down, to be shot in the back of the neck. 
The next group would then lie atop the previous victims and the process would repeat. It was a chilling assembly line of death, designed for maximum efficiency. But what about justice? Did Yekel never face the consequences of his actions? The answer is yes. Friedrich Yekel was captured by the Red Army at the end of the war. His trial painted a stark picture of his inhuman deeds, leading to his conviction. The hangman's noose, which had once been his tool of terror, ultimately served as his own executioner. He was hanged in February of 1946, a fate he had once doled out so carelessly to others. Jekyll may have escaped public memory, but his victims never escaped his deadly grasp. His story serves as a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity and the importance of standing against such inhumanity. This is the legacy of Friedrich Jekyll, one of history's vilest figures hidden in the shadows of Nazi terror. Our third leader is Irma Gress, dubbed the Hyena of Auschwitz. Born to a troubled family in 1923, Irma Gress found herself drawn to the radical ideologies of the Nazi party at a young age. She volunteered for the SS and was quickly assigned to work at the infamous Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp. Gress was no ordinary guard. She relished in the power she wielded over the inmates. Her sadistic practices earned her a notorious reputation among both her colleagues and the prisoners. Stories of her cruelty spread far and wide, painting a chilling portrait of a woman who derived pleasure from the suffering of others. She was known to select prisoners for the gas chambers and was said to carry a whip, which she used mercilessly on prisoners. She also had a pair of heavy boots, and it was said that the sound of her footsteps alone was enough to spread fear among the inmates. It wasn't just physical torture that she was known for. Greece was also adept at psychological manipulation, often playing mind games with the prisoners to further torment them. However, as World War II drew to a close, the tables turned on Irma Grace. She was captured by the British forces and brought to trial during the Belsen Trials, a series of military tribunals held by the Allied forces to prosecute war criminals. The evidence against her was overwhelming and she was found guilty of crimes against humanity. At the age of only 22, Irma Grease was executed in December of 1945. Her end was as cold and swift as the terror she had inflicted on countless innocent lives. Grease's reign of terror ended abruptly, but the scars she left behind remain. She serves as a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink when blinded by hatred and power. As we delve deeper into the shadows of history, we are confronted with the horrifying reality of the atrocities committed during this dark period, reminding us of the importance of remembering and learning from the past. Last but not least, we have Aribert Heim, known as the Angel of Death. Aribert Heim was a doctor, but far from the kind of doctor you'd want to see when you're feeling under the weather. He served at the Mauthausen concentration camp, where he committed unspeakable atrocities under the guise of medical experiments. His practices were so brutal, they earned him the chilling moniker of Dr. Death. Heim's experiments were not for the faint of heart. They ranged from injecting various substances into the hearts of his victims to performing surgery without anesthesia and removing organs just to see how long the human body could survive. But the story of Aribert Heim doesn't end with his monstrous deeds. After the fall of the Third Reich, Heim managed to disappear, evading capture and leading a life on the run. For years, he was one of the world's most wanted criminals, with a bounty on his head that only grew larger as time went on. The mystery surrounding his death is as chilling as his life. Some reports suggest he died in Cairo in 1992, while others claim he lived well into the 21st century. Regardless of when he met his end, one thing is for sure, Haim escaped the justice he so deserved. Haim may have evaded justice, but his heinous acts are forever etched in history.